And you may be able to explain it a little bit better. Like, what would you say is the difference between a paper and a develop lot? Like, how would you? So guys, this is Udi. We're here at MTR. This is our engineer, Paul Landa. And, uh... He's helped us out either through clients or personally, uh, just go through different projects, make sure we're not missing anything. Uh, they generally speaking uh, represent national, regional, local builders. They do commercial real estate, but uh, I'll let Paul give you a little rundown of what they do. Hi, Paul Landa with MTR Engineers. I'm one of the vice presidents here. Uh, my main focus primarily is single family residential development. But here at MTR, we do a full range of development from single family to commercial to school work to public work. So very well-rounded, uh, multifaceted civil engineering company. Yeah, and so he's gonna help us go through an OPC that he put together for a uh, 3.1 acres that we bought on Highway 16 that we're proposing to do uh, 20, 000, or two 20,000 square foot flex buildings. We've gone through maybe two or three site revisions through him and, and we feel like this is the one that, that we're gonna move forward with. I uh, already talked to my partners, we're putting together the pro forma, uh, making sure that right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to confirm that all of our costs you know we're, we're accounting for them every now and then i'll meet with paul and he'll give us an idea of his pulse of the market and i know you were kind of bringing up like you felt like some of the builders are pulling back just kind of given the interest rates and that's correct right right now we're, what we're seeing in, in the market is is a lot of land development activity or land acquisition activity has taken a pause and so we'll, we'll see what the market uh, plays out but you know builders are still actively looking for finished lots so um, and a finished lot would be a developed lot right co correct right and you may be able to explain it a little bit better like what would you say is the difference between a paper and a developed lot like how would you so paper lots are typically when you have a developer or another entity take a raw piece of land take it to get entitled, which means you get the master plan approved, you get uh, commitments for water and sewer, and um, that's more of an MDP lot, and a true paper lot is when we actually design the first unit, have a full set of approved construction drawings and drainage reports, and then that is a full true paper lot. And the paper lot's like a, uh you would say they use it like as a loose term, right? Like if someone's saying, hey, I'm selling a paper lot, it could mean a few different things, a few different people. Correct, right, right. So but a true so paper it's... lot would be construction docks in place, MDP, platting, utility service Correct. agreement. Full, fully entitled property <laughs> with, with full construction drawings. And then your developed lot is just? It's, it's a final finished lot, fully constructed, streets are in, water, sewer, everything's constructed. Nice. So you're seeing still a demand for developed lots or even then there's still some? Yes, for developed lots, that, that's a, a, the current market right now. And that, that's just the cycle, you know, yeah. typically developers will, uh, the, the market has been developers will fill that need of the market. It's just once the demand exceeds what the developers can provide, a lot of the builders provide that in-house development. Mm -hmm. And so now that they have more risk uh, or exposure and risk as far as continuing the development side with the home building side, they usually will pull back sure. on the development side. No, we're kind of seeing that as well. Like I think I mentioned, we have a lot of off-market properties that six months ago we would have been able to sell, you know, multiple offer situation. And now it's uh, it looks like it's slowing down a little bit. But um, yeah, no, I appreciate you meeting with us, man. Not a problem, always. So, do you still have a, I can, I can email it to you or if not, I don't know if you have that OPC on, on hand for Highway 16. And you can come over here. I'll, I'm putting together a, a pro forma development budget. And so you can see kind of some of the different functions that we, you know, we have our summary, which, you know, has our debt to value, equity to value, has our annualized leverage cash on cash return, our cap rate, our exit cap rate, but we also make some assumptions regarding our project budget and construction costs. And so that's where he's really gonna help me out and uh, make sure I'm not missing anything, uh, at least on the horizontal aspect of it. So that's the, the, 20, the two 20,000 square foot 
um, yes, buildings. Sir, no, sir. Yeah, so I was just double checking. Like I, I put it in front of uh, Melissa, which helps me with our pro formas and stuff. And so I wanted to just kind of run through it, make sure I'm not missing anything. Like I don't know if the OPC had permits, like as an expense or what I should pencil in for that. No, no, so, so <coughs> what, what's, what's pending on this uh, uh, cost estimate is, is the cost for for permits, for any architectural uh, cost, mechanical, engineering, plumbing, the MEP costs, uh, civil, and uh, platting. Okay. So it, it, those those costs, the engineering fees are, are not included in the proposal or in the cost estimate. So what do you think the uh, the cost for permitting? And there'll be two sets, right? For your side and then the, the vertical side as well? Right, right. So, so, so the vertical side, that's based on the value of the buildings. Okay. So that is... Um, like on a, on a praise value, like the county or so what the developer is thinking it'll, it'll cost? Right, right. Okay. So, so the, there's a, you know, a, a permit form that the Bear County has, or I'm sorry, the city of San Antonio has for this project that you will indicate the uh, a per, uh, estimated cost and there's a percentage based on that cost that would be your permitting fee okay um, and then it also depends there's there's some you know the philo fees the versus detention the, those kind of aspects that are, are not included okay what so this is just full civil is there something you can like help me plug in for the civil permitting fees? I, I can, yeah, yeah, Just I, like, I can. I mean, not a yeah, yeah, right, head, right. You're like, so you're right, yeah, like you said it on camera, right? <laughs> so he's, if so. he, uh, we'll hold him to it. No, and again, yeah. it's just you know, I just want to make sure because I'm about to present it to my partners, and I, I don't want to. I'd rather be under budget than uh, obviously go through it and go above budget. And we do our best, or we, we'll do the best that we can, but if we can kind of come up with uh, what the permitting would be. Uh, so, and then civil civil drawings, civil platting. I think I had plugged in some numbers, let's see. So for like our architectural costs, we put 86,600, which included uh, MEPs, our civil, we had a cost of 77,000. I think that that was mm -hmm. the platting. Yeah, right? that, that, that sounds, that about, sounds right. about right. Yep. Um, and then the geotech, we have that, the survey. Y'all do geotech, right? And so it reports? Uh, no, we, we'll set that out too. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so I think the permits, you know, I want to plug a number in there just to make sure I'm not. Is it usually a big number? Or I guess it varies. The civil so, permit is not very large. The architectural permit with a building permit. It can you know, get pretty. It can get pretty large depending on. Okay because they go based on the inspections that they have to do for the electrical, the, uh, you know, right, fire, right, right. Uh, everybody has. A, a fee, everyone has to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, impact fees. So impact fees. Is that included in the OPC? No, so impact fees depends on the type of meter and how you intend to provide service. Sure. Whether it's gonna be one shared service versus <coughs> two independent services, it depends on what the plan is. If you want two separate buildings or it's gonna be one separate, one inclusive site. But that OPC is for the parking and everything for both buildings, Correct. right? Okay. Correct. Um, so, so this is just solely for the improvements that, that based on the site plan. Okay. So I, I, I can work something up to add the additional. Yeah, just so I can them. keep, so I can have something to plug in. And then I did want to run two scenarios and obviously you can invoice me, but okay. so I want to look at it just like where there's a 20,000 square foot building, one meter, obviously just for sewer and then one meter for water and then would you advise to individually meter the electric aspect or that's just i mean it's yes yeah, so if you're gonna do one meter for each for for water because that, that one's like one meter right i think that opc or that it has two meters okay oh for each building right, 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 so, right. so it has a two meters for domestic but it has one shared meter for the fire flow between the two buildings. Okay. So we also want to look at the, the development where we can sell off individual suites. Mm -hmm. So that would, then we'd have to get a individual water, individual. So in those cases, in something like this, most of the time they, there's one master meter and you just bill each tenant a, a, a sub. 
like a a pro rate or a, a percentage of its overall right okay so you know i want i want to look at both you yeah know. otherwise you have to run a, a public line and then the cost of it's gonna yes yeah. okay it's, it's it's more cost effective to do one master meter and subdivided and then, so how would, how would you keep track of each individual use it's based on more usually it's based on you could do it on square footage of the area that they're renting yeah so like, say you have twenty thousand square foot one person rents four thousand square feet and the other thousand 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 you just prorate it based okay. on that or you know you want to get more technical based on like number of brush wow. trims or fixtures no you know, i think we're just thinking that's... like 1250 square foot spaces so i think that equals out to like 16 suites uh would like to make it a trip on that deal right mm -hmm. if we if we hold it but then also wanted to look at the option of having like hey if you want to sell off two suites right get some money back to the partnership and then still keep the rest as a uh, right you know just an income producing property so um i was looking at lights we're going to need some obviously some lights right for the development mm -hmm. would you just i mean again is it's it's probably not in the opc so no no not for um i guess parking lighting right is that generally or like do you pass that along to the architect so, to give you a proposal right for that? so typically the the mep will lay out the the parking okay lighting. perfect um so yeah. you can do you know your high or you can put them on the building that exterior okay or you can do you know the little bollards with lights i mean so there's Throw some Christmas yeah, lights out there. Yeah, so you can do it multiple <laughs> ways. Yeah, make it look like a Mexican restaurant. With That's the, it. And hey, we may have a Mexican <laughs> restaurant out there, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else you I mean. Again, I just wanted to sit down because I'm, I'm putting together this budget, this uh, proposal for our investors and my or, uh, my partners. And I just want to make sure. I don't know if they're. You know, you have a lot more experience yeah, putting the these apps. together than I do. And last thing I want to say is, hey, I need some more money. So um, <laughs> understood. No, we, we, I definitely can can work up uh, the the permitting and, and engineering fees related to the civil. Um, the only I don't, I don't know what um, what else what are the line items? Or, yeah, what what other architect have you have you engaged an architect or is it going to be a design build type uh, building structure? So, so it's a it's a prefabricated Pre steel building, okay. and so I got a proposal from a few uh, steel manufacturers or people that specialize in that, and then I just talked to two or three architects, and I guess they like to keep the MEP in-house, right? Is that how you normally see it? So or they, they, they typically will control that aspect their, of their, it. Their team. And I don't that, know if you want to the tell interior. them what MEP is, they may not know. Oh, so MEP is your mechanical, electrical, plumbing. So that is everything inside. So you're talking about the air conditioning systems, the electrical systems, and all the plumbing systems inside the building up to more or less five feet outside the building. Okay, uh, let's see what else I had. So impact fees, you can kind of give me an idea of what that, that would be. The uh, What about data and communication? Like who would I who would I speak? I don't know if you have any insight who I got to talk to about. Would that be MEP or would that be architect? So, so some, some of the MEPs, they, they do uh, the data uh, collection, data systems. Okay. They can do that, yeah. And then the geotech basically gives a foundation contractor right, an idea, right? Recommendations right. of what type of soil it is. Right, and so that's the other aspect of it. Some some of the, the pre-manufactured buildings, they may have their own uh, structural engineer mm -hmm. that designs the foundations, but they're going to need the geotech to provide recommendations. And then it's going to be your decision as far as um, the level of risk you're willing to accept on a, a foundation. Mm -hmm. So typically there's a, a PVI's potential for vertical increase. Uh, that is most commercial or school. I think we're at like one inch. And that's the threshold that a, a lender is willing to accept? No, or that's, that's how much. So with every soils, especially down here where we have a lot of clay soils, there's a lot of expansion. Understand. And, um, so those soils uh, to mitigate the potential for them to expand, sometimes you have to over excavate underneath the the, mm. the the building 
and bring in new material that is uh, not as high as PI. Mm -hmm. And so that way it can- And PI means? Plasticity index. So, okay. So it's like how, how plastic it is. So like clay, right? If you uh, add a lot of water, it, it'll, it, it'll expand. If you take out the water, it, it, it contracts. It contracts. Okay. And so, um, you know, so, so they'll provide the recommendation as far as well, you know, if you're willing to accept a two inch mm -hmm. PVI, you'll have a, you know, maybe over excavate three, four feet. If you go down to one inch, mm -hmm. you may over excavate six feet. So um, most people, it's, it's about an inch, inch and a half okay. max is, is what they're willing to accept. And do you have any advice, like, uh, I don't know if you have the site plan, if we could pull it up? like whether you think we should start on like the northern side or if there's a, you know, economies of scale of like starting closer to Cameron's Way. That uh, looks like it, right? 220,000. Yes. So, so the, the only, so, okay. So you have, there's existing water along 16 and on Cameron's Way. So the uh, I think that's your stub out right there, right? Right. So, so the connection is, is, is relatively simple. Your sewer is, is, is up here on Cameron's Way. So if you go with lot two, you'll have a little bit more extension of sewer line to, to, to construct. Um, so depending on the use, you may have to build this access way to create uh, your, your two access points. And the OPC for, for, has for all circulation. the other. Right, right. The, so the OPC has the entirety of, of the pavement. But you may, with, if you're only building one building, you may have to build, you know, this roadway coming out and this coming around for for circulation, for you know, for fire mm -hmm. flow. How how would you, um, as far as OPC, like what, like if you had to explain it to somebody that didn't have any, you know, so it, yeah, OPC is opinion or probable cost. Uh, typically, what we'll do is we'll uh, be able to estimate the amount of say what we need to provide sewer, what we need to provide water, what we need to provide the pavement. Uh, the fill is typically estimated based on an order of magnitude type. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's not exactly graded out. Per no, I've seen, I've seen the disclaimer. Yeah, it says like, yeah. But it yeah. gives you a general, like yeah, a general so, range, so right? Like for this, we, you know, we know we're gonna need a lot of fill. So, you know, you, we kind of take an average of, well, we, we need two feet of fill for the entire site. And that's kind of how we estimate, you know, sure. w what the uh, mag level of magnitude for fill is. So you gave me this OPC maybe like, what, like two months ago? Mm -hmm. Do you think, do you see construction prices going down or are they kind of staying where they're at or what, what do you like? I don't know if you have any. From two months ago, we've seen a decrease in water and sewer costs, mainly not necessarily because the material pricing is coming down, but maybe some of the margins that the contractors have been able to charge, you know, they're not able to charge those margins anymore. They're looking, business isn't as uh, rocking and rolling as it was yeah, before. Yes, well, so the residential, I, I think, is, is kind of hitting a little lull, mm -hmm. but the um, the commercial side of it, I'm starting to see a little bit more commercial pop up. Cool. You know, we've been experiencing residential growth um, these last yeah, know, it's been it's three, been booming three four it's, years. Right, it's been crazy. And the commercial growth typically follows the residential growth, and and also since COVID hit, it you just, know, commercial kind of hit, yeah, hit lull, because everybody's working from home. And that is true. Now the residential has expanded. Well, now that you've built out, you know, a couple thousand single family residents that doesn't have a you know retail shop, doesn't have mm -hmm. a doctor's office or things like that so now those are starting to come into play got it to fill the need so i guess on this like the the way you had the opc i guess it really wouldn't matter like what building you start with right because you're we're basically doing the construction for the whole horizontal aspect of it or would you yeah say i mean what you you would save mainly primarily is, is your payment costs but I see, you know, we have drainage coming onto us. We have potential need for 
uh, detention, underground detention system. So we that's going to have to be pretty much a day one expense um, from the from the beginning. So which the numbers still can't, they still work with that one point. I think it was about one point six million, right? For the uh, the horizontal cost, mm -hmm. but that includes like the underground detention and. That's that's correct. Okay. Yeah, man. I don't. You know. Obviously, we're relying on on you. Just you know, just for any insight that you know that we. Can right, and then we also, like I said, we typically include a ten percent contingency just to unknown of the pricing. Right. Um, unknown. We haven't really gotten into the the detailed design. Sure. Um, but that kind of allows us a little fluff for, um, and the cur or the OPC includes curb, sidewalks, uh, asphalt or concrete, correct. Uh, detention, detention, you're right. And I think we assume there's two different types of pavement typically in the, on the, on the parking stalls. We'll do a little lighter pavement section. And then in the main roadways, we'll beef up that, those sections to accommodate the, the higher traffic loading. Okay. Yeah. So I think, would you say like for anybody that's looking to develop anything, uh, an OPC is like where you need to get started. Obviously you want to get your boundary and your tree and your phase one environmental survey, but to really understand like the cost of the development, the horizontal aspect of it's where you want to start. It's, it's a, it's a feasibility OPC type study. Sure. So what so we'll, uh, analyze a little bit of the drainage patterns analyze where we need to bring water, where we need to bring sewer, and lay something out as far as the site plan, what can work, you know, because we, obviously we need to accommodate the uh, parking ratios that the city requires, the detention requirements, the, um, you know, yeah. e everything we need to check off the list. One thing I, I think it's, uh the traffic impact analysis, right? I don't think, is that included in that, in the OPCs usually? No, no, that's part of the engineering fees. Okay, so, so that so, would, yeah. That so. plus or minus that 70 grand or, you know. C correct. Right, plus or minus, correct. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul, man, I appreciate your time. You know, obviously we always go to him to, to make sure that our numbers are right. He's actually uh, introduced us to uh, large builders, uh, national, regional. He works with probably some of the biggest developers in town, right? Yeah. So no, I appreciate your time, man. And if you're looking for a good engineer, uh, <laughs> reach out to MTR if they got room. Appreciate it, thank yeah, you. For sure, no, I appreciate it, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs>